years. In 2010, we were out here. We were protesting the invasion of Iraq. And the maniacs, the war criminals in the U.S. government started bombing Libya. Now that country is in tatters. You know, I hate to say this. Well, no, I don't. <laughs> I was lying when I said I hate to say this. But I've been speaking for 45 seconds at least. I haven't said one F word yet. Yay, Cindy. Say it. Say it. <laughs> but anyway, say it. Say it. Um, if McCain or Romney, if they were bombing six or seven or eight countries like Obama is, if they were threatening Russia like Obama is, if they said that Venezuela was a national threat to the United States, raise your hand if you stay up night at night worried that there's a Venezuelan in your closet. <laughs> Venezuela <laughs> invading us. Like the, like the sister said earlier, we don't have anything to worry about. The regime, capitalism, imperialism, they have to worry about the threat of a good example of, from Venezuela. So if, if this was a Republican in there, there would be tens of thousands of people out here, and there were tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of peop people out here protesting Bush's two wars. You know, let's divorce our anti-war activism from the, excuse me, from the Democratic Party. Yeah. We cannot simultaneously be pro 
Can you help me with this banner? Sure. Tortured and indefinitely detained in Guantanamo and everywhere else because we are a movement for whom humanity and the planet come first and for whom American lives are not more important than other people's lives. So let's hear it. Shut down Honeywell. Shut down Honeywell. Shut down. which of course it was, a catastrophe for the people who lived there, for the million who died, for the five million who were made into refugees, for a country that was torn apart, for the 5,000 Americans who died there, for the tens of thousands of Americans who have suffered life-changing wounds. If that was bad enough, can you possibly imagine a war with Iran, a country of 80 million people, a country who, by the way, has not invaded or initiated a war with any of its neighbors since the time that the United States was formed as a government 200 plus years ago? Why would they want war? Why would they want war against Iran? Because Iran threatens us? because Iran poses an existential uh, threat to the people of Israel. No. The real reason they want to scuttle and sabotage those negotiations, the real reason is they fear not the outbreak of war, but the outbreak of peace. That's right. They fear the outbreak of peace in the Middle East because then, one, Israel becomes less important as an extension of American military power in the Middle East. And secondly, because if there's peace in the Middle East, the people who live in the Middle East, the people who have inhabited it for five or 6,000 years, under the conditions of peace, will rebuild their countries as independent, strong, beautiful countries that they were before the United States wrecked those countries. And when we're here today confronting these senators, we say, you know what? The people in Iran, the people in that region, they're not our enemies, they're our sisters and brothers, and in fact we have much more in common with them than we do with these so-called representatives of the American people. That's why we're here. He's asking, he's asking now just what Dick Cheney and Bush asked for 12 years ago, 13 years ago authorization to carry out endless war. Our signs say endless war. That's not rhetoric. And thank you from the bottom of my heart to the Answer Coalition for today and their contribution to this whole several days of spring rising. There's going to be a fall rising, All folks. Right. And you know why? Because there's a people rising right now. On. Not only are we against these endless wars, but we are against the waging and the preparing of the wars. We need to start looking across the river at that Pentagon budget. Yeah. There's students here today. I'm calling for absolute student debt forgiveness All right. we're going to take we're going to take that pentagon budget apart piece by piece we're going to talk about better education in this country an infrastructure that works and putting people back to work we're going to look at that pentagon budget and we're going to see what we want right. an end to all wars an end to the blank checks for these freaking wars we're tired of it That's and we're right. going home and the people are rising that's right all the organization none of it means anything but Definitely, definitely look forward to fall rising. Look forward to many, many other things. Thank you again to World Can't Wait, Veterans for Peace, Military Families Speak Out. There's a whole range of groups and individuals who made this possible today. We're going to keep moving forward. Margaret Flowers, I see you. Thank you so much for being here. We have a, a, a just a, a strong cadre of people here who are going to stand solid shoulder to shoulder from here on in until we bring this empire empire down. It's ordinary people doing extraordinary things that change the world. And I know we're all ordinary people, but we started today doing extraordinary things. So thank you again for coming.